Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hook up the YX5300 MP3 player module to work with the ESP32. And if you've been struggling with it, looking at Arduino tutorials, this is really gonna help. Lately, I've been looking for different MP3 player modules for the ESP32 in order to trigger some sound effects for escape room puzzles I'm working on. I went through the DF player and some of those options, but I stumbled across the YX5300 module and I thought it would be a better solution for me because it goes right out to a headphone jack that I can plug into the line of a stereo and adjust the volume as necessary very easily. The DF player is a little bit different and I might cover that in another video, but the YX5300 is what I'm going to look at in this video. When I look through all the Arduino tutorials, one of the things that becomes apparent immediately is that Arduino uses a module or a library called Software Serial, which isn't used with the ESP32. And so the tutorials that are available don't really apply perfectly to the ESP32. It looked like a lot of people are having trouble tracking it down. I thought it would be a good idea to make a quick tutorial on how to get the module working and communicating with it properly. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up and how to put MP3 files on and also how to get them playing. It's not gonna require any special libraries, but it is gonna require some customization and also how to format the data so that you can send the commands properly. So without further ado, let's get into it. The module I'm using is one that I found on Amazon, the AD Pen YX5300. These come with a bunch of different brand names, but really as long as you have the YX5300 module, it should work fine. You'll also need to put some MP3 files onto a micro SD card and slide it into the module. As I'm creating an escape room with a bunch of crazy sounds, here's some silly MP3 sound effects that I'm using. They need to be labeled 001, 002, etc. And if you're creating folders, the folders also need to be in that format 01, 02, 03, etc. The connection on the module to the ESP32 is actually super simple. There's four wires, ground, VCC goes to the 3.3 volts. Depending on how your ESP32 is labeled, the RX2 or 16 pin will go to the TX on the YX5300 and the TX2 or 17 will go to the RX. The reason for that is that when the module sends to the ESP32, it's gonna be received. And when the ESP32 sends out, it's gonna be received by the module. That's why TX goes to RX and vice versa, not to keep the same label. I also use this drawing on randomnerdtutorials.com a lot in order to see the layout of all the pins, which can be really helpful. And you can see on the right hand side, the RX and TX2 pins, or 16 and 17. I've made this I've made this Arduino code as simple as I possibly can through all of the different sample codes I've seen. First thing you need to do is declare this static variable. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but it does need to be an array of eight elements and typically you're just gonna leave it empty. This define list is going to be your reference guide for human readable commands versus the hexadecimal equivalent. So you can see here cmd underscore next underscore song is command next song, but the hexadecimal equivalent is 0x01. It's gonna be hard to remember that, but using this definition list, you can find every time that you want to send a command, you only need to look up the human readable part, use that, and Arduino will automatically substitute the actual hexadecimal value in its place. If you're going to choose to play, you would type in cmd underscore play, but the hexadecimal would be used in its place when Arduino is actually doing something with it. They will remove this unnecessary comment, and you can see here in the setup loop, it's actually very small. If you want to write things out to your serial monitor, you're going to use the regular serial.begin and the baud rate that you want, and that's going to be anything that you want to print to the serial or communicate with the computer that it's plugged into. But serial2.begin is where we're gonna define the pins that are connecting to this YX5300 module. And you can see here, there's several arguments required. It doesn't really matter what you call it. I called it serial2 to make it simple because I'm also using the hardware serial2 on the ESP32. But you're just gonna define the baud rate, 9600. You're gonna put in the type of bytes that are being sent. Serial underscore eight and one is the correct one. And then 16 and 17 
16 are the ports that we're using. So those are the ones that we need to define. The ESP32 actually lets you define other ports as well if you'd like. You just need to define the pins that you're going to be using for it. The send command is where we're going to do all of the work here. And that's going to take one of these commands here and then two option argument. So when we put in that command, it's going to substitute the hexadecimal for us. Zero is option one in this particular line and dev tf is option two, which of course substitutes more hexadecimal code in its place. Now this one command is necessary in order to initialize the YX5300, so it's needed every time you use this module. There's a little bit of delay there. And if you want to run any sound effects just once, maybe you want to launch a sound effect, whatever you want, or an MP3 player to play, you're going to put it there in the setup loop if you only want it to play or use that command one time. However, if you want to use that command over and over again, or if you want to create some kind of event loop when you push buttons or have sensors or any other kind of interaction, you're typically going to do that in the loop function. And here I created a very simple for loop which is just gonna go through all of my different sound effects and play them one at a time. Here I created the for loop so that it's gonna stay in folder one and then it's gonna loop through all six songs from zero to six and play every one of the mp3s that I have, all of these crazy sound effects. You wanna put enough delay in there so that it has time for the full sound effect or song to play before you do something else and overwrite it, otherwise you get some strange sounds out at the end. This void send command or the send command function is going to be the meat and potatoes of what structures all of these different bytes that we need and puts them in the right order to send to the module. It takes three arguments, command, option one, and option two. And you can see here that each one of these is a byte of information. There's eight bytes needed in order to send this message to the module. And so each one of these is something that's necessary. And you can see there the fourth, sixth, and seventh are our command option one and option two. Now let me show you how these relate to the actual manual and I'll put a link to the manual in the description, but each of, there's a bunch of command bytes that are necessary for each command. You can see here as I scroll through, there's a bunch of different commands that are available. All of those are defined above, but for each of them, they have this string of hexadecimal pairs that need to be put. So if I use the command that I used, which is playing uh, music within a particular folder and file, you can see here it does 7E, then FF, then 06, and if you look at the code as it's written out in the Arduino sketch, you can see 0x, which tells you it's hexadecimal, and then the same pair of letters and numbers in the same order. So 0x7e, ff, 06, and then the command, the ones that are in blue, is the one that tells it which actual function it's gonna do. The next one's always zero, and then we get into our two options. So for commands that have extra options, the next pair is the first option, which we're gonna call option one, and the second pair is option two, or the second set of features, and then it ends with an EF, and then all of that together gets sent as one command. So the for loop here, it just combines all of those different things, sending them one after the other after the other into our array and writing it to the module. And that's all we need to do to get it to work. We just need to send these groups of commands together if we don't know what to put in a particular option, almost always if you look through this table, you can see that it's zero. Not a lot of commands use these options too. So if you're unsure what to put with it, you can always do your command and then zero and zero for option one and option two. Or if you look through the documentation, you can see where you might need a different number in order to make it work properly. That's all you need to do in order to initiate and use this module to get it performing all of the functions that it's supposed to do and and do it easily on the ESP32. Now for a couple sound effects. <laughs>So there you can see in their simplest form, it's really not that difficult to get these commands working and to be able to get sound out of the control board. The fact that the ESP32 uses hardware serial is really nice because there's multiple serial options and the ability to add customization to other pins in order to make them do serial as well is really quite powerful over the Arduino. Once you can control and play those files, all you need to do is hook up the correct triggers that whether that's buttons or capacitive sensors or whatever it's gonna to be to trigger those sounds to play or those songs to play, whatever you've put in the MP3 files. I'm gonna be using this in some escape room puzzles. So let me know in the comments, what are you gonna be using this module for? And 
if this tutorial got you up and running. If you want to send me an email, my information is also in the description below, and I'm always interested in hearing your comments, helping out with some of your struggles, and also hearing future ideas for other videos. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check back weekly as I post a new video every week on a wide variety of DIY topics, building, 3D printing, electronics, and much more. And so until next time, in all your DIY projects, keep the music playing and don't be afraid to be bolder.